Hello, everyone. My name is Rajesh Jairam. And today I want to talk to you about some new streaming algorithms for high dimensional geometric earth mover distance and minimum spanning tree. So this is a joint work with Shi Chen, Amit Levy, and Eric Widener. <laughs> so I want to begin by defining these two problems, the earth mover distance and the minimum spanning tree. So the earth mover distance in a geometric space is given by this metric space and two subsets A and B of the metric space with endpoints each. And it's actually a metric between such subsets. And the way you define the metric is the earth mover distance between A and B is the minimum over all matchings between the points in A and the points in B, where the cost of that matching is given by the distances in the metric space. So it's the minimum over all uh, min cost matchings, where the cost of the matching is the distance between each point AI and the point BMI that's matched to. And in this talk, we'll be focused mostly on computing approximations to the earth mover distance. So our goal will be to output some number R, which is an alpha approximation to the earth mover distance. So that could mean that R is always at least the earth mover distance and at most alpha times larger than the earth mover distance. So similarly, we'll also look at a geometric minimum spanning tree problem. So here we also have a metric space x dx, and we're given one subset A of endpoints of that metric space. And our goal is going to be to approximate the cost of a minimum spanning tree of A. So here, a spanning tree of A is just connects up all the points in A. So the vertices of T uh, are points in the metric space in A. And the cost of an edge is simply the distance between those two points in the metric space. So the minimum spanning tree cost is the cost of the geometric minimum spanning tree. In this talk, though, I'm, we're mostly going to be focusing on the problem of earth mover distance because the techniques which we'll use uh, to uh, develop improved bounds for earth mover distance will be very similar to those which we use to develop improved bounds for minimum spanning tree. So just for context, what is known about exactly computing the value of EMD, not even in a stream, but offline? Well, in essence, earth mover distance is just a min cost bipartite, perfect bipartite matching problem. But we're given the promise that the weights uh, in the bipartite matching problem satisfy the triangle inequality. That's the, the metric aspect of it. So of course, min cost bipartite perfect matching can be solved with the Hungarian algorithm. And this requires n cube time. But it turns out that you can also formulate this problem as a min cost flow problem. And recent min breakthroughs in min cost, uh, fast min cost flow problems show that you can get almost uh, quadratic time algorithms, almost n squared time algorithms uh, to compute, exactly compute the earth mover distance. On the other hand, for exact computation, it's known uh, due to fine grained complexity lower bounds that uh, it's unlikely to break n squared runtime simply because of a reduction to the orthogonal vectors conjecture. So for exact computation, n squared is roughly the runtime we expect for this problem. But in this talk, we'll be focused mostly on streaming algorithms, which are not given access to the whole data set in advance. So this is coming from the so-called geometric stream model, which was in introduced by INDIC in 2004. And in this model, we generally work with the L1 metric because L1 tends to be more general than L2, just by the fact that we can embed L2 into L1. So here, for the rest of the talk, we're going to focus on the case where the metric space is some discrete d-dimensional hyper uh, d-dimensional space with uh, delta um, different coordinates, um, sorry, delta discretized values in each coordinate, and we'll use the L1 metric. The reason we discretize the coordinates here instead of working in RD is simply because we need the points themselves to be representable in finite space because this is the streaming model. And so then in this geometric stream model, our points A and B uh, in these sets are going to arrive in a stream in some arbitrary order. And in the most general case, points could be both inserted and deleted. And at the end of the stream, the number of active points constitutes these sets A and B. And we want to be able to approximate the uh, earth mover distance between these two sets. We want to do so using a small amount of space, ideally polynomial in D and log of N and delta. And the reason that we want to, we're allowed to polynomial in D is in some sense, the size of a point itself requires D log delta bits of space to represent. Okay, so now I can talk about what's known uh, for bounds for this problem. And there's something of a split between the techniques and the results you get for low dimensional space and high dimensional space. 
So it's known in low dimensions that we could always get a d log delta approximation to the earth mover distance in polylog space. And this is a result of Indic and Dafer from 2004. It's also known for low dimensions for specifically for the case of the plane for R2, then one for any epsilon can obtain a one over epsilon approximation using n to the epsilon space. Um, and this is the result of Andoni, Bot, and Dick, and Woodruff from Box 2009. In high dimensions, on the other hand, the problem becomes quite a bit more uh, difficult to get small approximation factors. Uh, and so far, the best known approximation was log n times log d delta in polylog space. And this is a result of Andoni, Indic, and Krauth Gammer. And so roughly, if we think of the dimension as being uh, on the order or polynomially related to the number of points, this is like a log squared n approximation. Now, we can mention the main results of this paper, which are to give improved algorithms with a high dimensional case. So specifically, we give it a new algorithm uh, with the same amount of space that obtains only a tilde O log n approximation. So going from roughly a log squared n approximation to a log n approximation when d and n are polynomially related. On the other hand, this algorithm that obtains this approved approximation is a two pass algorithm. We show that it can be compressed to a single pass at the cost of a slightly larger space complexity, d times delta, and a slight conditional statement, which is that the input needs to have a bounded overlap, meaning that the sets A and B cannot be exactly on top of each other. The, in particular, the Jacquard similarity has to be bounded away from one. Um, and if it's arbitrarily close to one, our space needs to increase uh, uh, in that respect. Okay. So we also give similar bounds for MST, but in fact, our bounds for MST are even better. So for the MST problem, um, the, sa the same known approximations for low dimensional space and high dimensional space followed from the results of Indic and Thaper and from Andoni and Dick Krauth Gammer. Um, so it was known how to get a log M log D delta approximation to MST. We show that actually in one pass with no conditions and only using poly log N D delta space, we get a log tilde O log N approximation to the optimal cost. So our bounds for MST are even better than our bounds for EMD. So these are the main contributions of this work. So now what I want to do is give an outline for the rest of the talk. We're going to focus on three steps. We're first going to define this quadtree algorithm, which is a method to obtain approximations to earth mover distance very fast and also in a stream. We're then going to talk about a new data dependent quadtree algorithm, which is one of the main contributions of this work. And then we're going to show how we go from that new algorithm to a streaming algorithm. So let's begin with the quadtree algorithm. <clears throat> so the quadtree algorithm is a space partitioning method, which can be used for a number of geometric uh, tasks. So roughly, we'll describe it in the context of earth mover distance. So the way quadtree works is it takes your space, Rd, and it recursively subdivides it with a grid at multiple levels. And each subdivision creates a recursion tree. And so what we want to do is map points from the space to leaves of the tree. This is a so-called tree embedding step where we map the points to the pieces of the partition that they fall in. Now that we have our points in the leaves of this tree, uh, it turns out that computing earth mover distance over this tree metric that we've just uh, computed, created, actually embeds isometrically into L1. So EMD over tree metrics can be embedded directly into L1 without any distortion. And now that we have earth mover distance in L1 space, or rather a problem reduced to uh, computing distances in L1, we can simply use the fact that L1 can be sketched in small amount of space. This is a result due to Indic in 2004. So altogether, the quadtree algorithm allows us to embed our points into a tree and then embed the tree into L1, and which can be estimated in small space. And because the uh, embedding from the tree into L1 uh, has no distortion, the overall approximation is just the distortion of mapping our points to the tree to begin with. So how exactly does quadtree algorithm work? Well, it imposes a randomly shifted grid over the space at log d delta scales. So at the first scale, we split things roughly in half, and then we split things into four pieces and then eight pieces and so on. So that roughly, if I have two points A and B whose distance is less than D delta over two to the I, the aspect ratio over two to the I, then we'd like it to be the case that these points are together after I recursive steps of the tree at depth I. So we split once into some number of points and then we split again and these points A and B go to the pieces of the partition that they land in the tree. 
So this creates this recursion tree T, and each node of the tree contains some subset of the original space corresponding to all the points which would land in that subset piece of the partition. Now, what we're going to do is give each edge in this tree a weight, so to create a tree metric. Now, the weight of an edge at depth i is going to be d times delta over 2 to the i. The reason we do that is because we roughly expect points which are at this distance to split apart at that level. So that their distance in the tree metric will be d delta over 2 to the i times some constant because these edges are have geometrically decreasing edge weights as you go down the tree. So whenever we think of depth i, we'd like points to be d, a distance d delta over 2 to the i. So we're going to set that edge weight to be d delta over 2 to the i. So now we map all of our points in our sets a and b to the leaves of the tree, which contain just that set, just that point. Um, and this results in actually a metric embedding from the original space to a, a tree with the shortest path metric on that tree given by these edge weights. And then what we'll do to actually create a matching is we'll perform the so-called greedy bottom-up matching by taking the points, walking them back up the tree, and arbitrarily matching them together. And the cost of this greedy matching will be our uh, estimate. So let me now go into a little detail of what this looks like. So we have our points lying, say, on the plane for simplicity. And we have the, right now, they're all on the root of the tree. And what we're going to do is we'll randomly split up these points. So we'll create a cut. And I'll write 0 and 1 just to show what side of the cut you're on. And now the points that are on the 0 side go to the 0 side. The points that are on the 1 side go to the 1 side. And then we continue to split them up again, uh, creating two more recursive partitions on each side. And then we keep splitting and cutting the points further and further until every piece of the partition contains exactly one point, or at most one point, of the original uh, input. Now that we have all these points at these leaves, what we're going to do is walk them up the tree step by step, matching up points as we go arbitrarily. So in the first step, we'll walk everything up the tree one level, and we'll see, we'll try to match any of the red points up to the blue points when they're at the same node. So this creates a matching, but over here we have one blue point which can't be matched, and over here we have an extra red point which can't be matched. So those points have to walk up the tree again, and they keep walking up the tree until they meet and match together. And this creates an overall matching between the points, the so-called greedy bottom-up matching. Now, the useful thing about this greedy bottom-up matching is that the greedy bottom-up matching is actually optimal for a tree metric. And moreover, we already know that the cost, as we mentioned, the cost of this greedy matching and a tree metric embeds isometrically into L1. So altogether, this implies that earth mover distance over trees embeds isometrically into L1. Um, but to, I'm going to actually describe this embedding because it'll be useful to know exactly how it works. So how does this embedding work? Well, first, for every vertex V in the tree, let's write A sub V to be the set of points A in our set A, which map to that vertex in the tree, which are contained in S of V, the set of points in that piece of the partition. And we'll similarly define B V for the, uh, for the vertex, for the set B. And now I'm just going to define T of i to be the subset of edges that are at depth i. And recall that we set the edge weight of all the edges at depth i to be d times delta over 2 to the i to get a tree metric. So here's the embedding. It turns out that the earth mover distance in the tree metric between a and b is just the sum over all the levels in the tree. And then the sum of each edge in that level, the weight of that edge times the discrepancy of that edge. So what is the discrepancy? The discrepancy is the difference between the number of points in A, which land in that, in that vertex below, and the number of points in B, which land in that vertex. Why is this a useful measure? Because the discrepancy is the number of points which are going to have to walk up the tree. And each of those points that has to walk up the tree has to pay a distance, which is the edge that it walks up. So the discrepancy, the distance between the number of points in A and the number of points in B, that land at a vertex is the key measure. And notice that, in some sense, if we look at the, uh, the weighted L1 norm, this is the, the norm of a weight of that edge times the size of A at, at a vertex minus the size of B at a vertex. So this earth mover distance, if we define a vector which has coordinates AB times the weight of an edge, so it's a weighted L1 vector, a coordinates BB times the weight of that edge, then the L1 norm of the difference between those two vectors is exactly equal to the earth mover distance. 
So this is how we embed earth mover distance over a tree asymmetrically into L1. And the nice thing about this embedding is that not only can you keep track of it in a stream, but you can estimate this norm of, of uh, this L1 norm to a small one plus or epsilon factor in a stream using a very small amount of space. And this is due to the Cauchy sketch of Indic. So this is how we embed it to L1. And in fact, it's known that using this embedding, the quadtree cost um, is gives uh, log n times minimum of log n and log d approximation to the optimal cost. So this is due to Andoni Indic and Kraft Gamma and Backrest, Dong Indic, Razzlestein and Wagner more recently. So this demonstrates that uh, using this approach of embedding to a tree and creating these edges gives uh, roughly a log squared approximation. So now I want to talk about a new data dependent quadtree algorithm, which we introduced in our work, or which we, anal which we analyze in our work, which gives an improved approximation. So what is the key idea? The first key idea is instead of using fixed edge weights, where we give the weight of an edge at level i d, uh, weight d times delta over 2 to the i, we're going to use data dependent edge weights, which better capture the distances which are actually going on between the underlying points. So specifically, what we do is we can define a new distance tilde of EMD in the tree, which is the sum over all the edges in the tree, the discrepancy between the points, between the number of points A that go into that edge and B that go through that edge, times a new weight, which is a data dependent weight. So what is the weight tilde of W U V? Well, the way it works, I look at all the points which are in U, the lower point, and I pick two random points and I look at the distance between them. So it's the average distance between two points which go up that edge. So instead of a fixed distance, which we hope points obey on average, we look at the actual expected distance between two random points that go up that edge. And that's going to be our new data dependent edge weight. And what we're going to do is show that this data dependent edge weight gives an improved approximation to the earth mover distance in the original metric space. And one thing I'll note is that it's relatively easy to show um, that this cost deterministically is always larger than the true earth mover distance in the original metric space. So in order to show that we get a good approximation, we just need to show that it's not too much larger. We just need to upper bound it. And that's what we'll do. So what was known previously, of course, was that earth mover distance gave roughly a log squared approximation. And this work, we show the following theorem, which is that this new data dependent earth mover distance with the data dependent edge weights w, tilde w, gives an improved log n, tilde log n approximation. So we go roughly from log squared to log n up to log log factors. That's our improved approximation. So this theorem is one of the main uh, new technical contributions of the work, showing that using data-dependent techniques, we can obtain an improved tree embedding for a given set A and B with a lower approximation. So now what I want to do is describe at a high level how this analysis works. So roughly, let's let D tilde AB be the distance of the tree metric using this new tilde W. Now, because these uh, weights are geometrically decreasing, the cost, uh, the total distance between two points in the tree is going to roughly be equal to the cost of the edge, the weight of the edge where they first split. So if A and B first split at a vertex V, the distance is going to be roughly up to a constant equal to that weight, which is an average case distance. So ideally, we would want this average case distance to be equal to D times delta over 2 to the I, because that was what we hoped the distance would be, what points would split at that level. Unfortunately, what can happen is that the average case distance between two points which land on that edge could be actually a log n factor larger. And this log n factor is where one of the log n's comes into terms of the uh, approximation. So this means that the distance is actually large even on average. So now let's see how this plays into the analysis. So let's fix any two points A and B, which are in the optimal matching. And let's say that their distance is D times delta over 2 to the i, for simplicity. We'd like these two points to still be together at depth i in the tree. But unfortunately, what could happen is that these two points could split early. They could split a depth j higher up in the tree. So they split one level early with probably roughly one half. They split two levels early with probably one fourth and so on. So they split j levels early with probably two to the j i minus j. And when this happens, the distance increases because they have to walk further up the tree to meet each other. So in particular, 
they pay a two to the J minus I factor larger for J levels higher up the tree, J minus I levels higher the tree. And then we pay an extra log N for this worst case fact that the weight of the average case weight of the edge could be a log N factor larger. In particular, if E is the edge where they split and the depth of that edge is J, then the distance between these two points in the new tree metric is at most, you know, is at least roughly the weight of the edge where they split, which we say is a log N factor larger than D times delta over two to the J in the worst case. But this is a log N times two to the J minus I factor larger than the original distance. So if we put this all together to analyze what the distance between A and B will actually be, if I let E, E1 down to ET be a path down the tree, so EI is a edge at depth I, then we know that the average case weight of an edge is at most log N times D times delta over two to the J. But this means that the distance and the tree between A and B is at most the sum from J equals zero to I, sum of all the places where we could split early, the probability that we split early times the weight of that edge where they split. But the weight of that edge is at most a log n times two to the j minus i factor larger than you should be. And so these two to the j minus i uh, to the i minus j cancel. And overall, we get a log n times log d delta approximation to the overall solution because we're summing over log d delta steps. So this is where the prior bounds came from, roughly. So now I want to briefly mention where our proved approximation comes from. In particular, the key idea is we show that even though in the worst case, this average case distance can be a log n times factor larger, we show that on average, over the, the entire path up the tree, no path up the tree can have an average case distance, which is a log n factor larger many times. In particular, the average case distance of an edge can only be a log n factor larger than it should be a constant number of times. And we show a more amortized version of this in general to show that for any distribution of the points, this overall sum, which is that how much bigger is W, the weight of an edge, than it should be, is overall only a log n factor over the entire tree. So this is done using an amortized analysis showing, crucially using the fact that this weight is an average case weight between all the points that go through an edge. And that's all I have time to say about with regards to this analysis, but I mentioned that there's a longer talk which goes into depth for how we prove this particular fact, which can be found here. So now I wanna briefly discuss how we go from data dependent quadri to streaming algorithms. So the key challenge is that this earth mover distance that we had, this data dependent earth mover distance no longer embeds into L1. And the reason is that the weights themselves depend on the input points. So we can't simply use the L1 embedding, we need to actually uh, you know, do something different. So what we first do is describe a two-pass algorithm for estimating this, this cost. And let's do that by splitting up the overall cost into levels i. So it, we estimate for each of the log d delta levels, we estimate the cost of the edges at that level. So this is just the sum, the discrepancy of the points at every, over every edge times the weight of that edge. So how are we going to estimate this? Well, we'll do it in two passes. Um, and we'll, to do that, we'll note by using important sampling that to estimate this thing, uh, we simply need to uh, first sample an edge from this level with probability proportional to how much it contributes. So the contribution is the discrepancy over this edge. So we'll look at the, this discrepancy vector, delta VI, which is the difference between AV and BV at that vertex V. And we'll sample an edge from the L1 distribution, that is the distribution whose coordinates are proportional to the sizes of the uh, coordinates, um, and then we'll output the weight of that edge. So we sample uh, an edge probably proportional to the discrepancy, and then we output the weight of that edge. And then to scale, we multiply by the total weight discrepancy of all vertices. And this equality is simply the important sampling technique. So how do we utilize important sampling? Well, to utilize important sampling, we simply need to estimate two things. We need to estimate this L1 norm, which we do on the first pass, which is the total discrepancy over all the edges. And then we need to estimate this expectation. So to do that on the first pass, we sample an edge from the correct L1 distribution with we'll probability proportional to the discrepancy. Then on the second pass, we'll sample, once we have this edge that we sampled, now we just need to compute this expected distance between two points that are in that edge. So we'll sample two points that go through that edge and output L, which is our estimate of the total L1 norm, times the distance. And this thing can be thought of as a sample 
whose expectation is the correct expectation. So this estimator has bounded variance. So by repeating it polynomially many uh, polylogarithmically many times, we'll get a good approximation of the overall uh, earth mover distance at that level. And each of these steps can be implemented in a stream, in particular, estimating the L1 norm can be done by a Cauchy sketch. Sampling from L1 distribution can be done using so-called L1 samplers. And then finally, once we have the edge, we can sample two points which land in that uh, through that edge simply by a subsampling technique and then a Cauchy sketch. And now, briefly, the method we use to uh, compress this to one pass is this uh, technique of basically trying to sample for the distribution and also output the value of the sample, the weight of that sample, in one pass. And we call this the sampling with metadata problem because we want to sample from a distribution and then also output some metadata, which is the weight, at the same time. Now, in general, we won't be able to do this, but we show that for our problem, we can do this uh, so long as the overlap between the points, is, the sets of points A and B is not too large. And we do this using this so-called precision sampling technique. Very roughly, precision sampling scales each of the coordinates of this vector we're trying to L1 sample from by a random variable TU. So that the biggest coordinate after this random sampling is actually the sample which we want to return. So precision sampling is a technique which reduces uh, sampling from a vector to finding the biggest coordinate in the vector. What we do is actually introduce a new variant of the precision sampling technique, which introduces this metadata as well, um, which uh, so-called sketch of the metadata. And we also scale this metadata by the same random variables to you. The intuition is that if a coordinate becomes the biggest coordinate after scaling by TU, then TU must be pretty big, this random variable. So if I scale the metadata also by this big random variable, it should, be, it should stick out, and I should be able to recover approximately this metadata because it's being scaled by a large random variable. That's the high-level intuition. And to do this, we need to introduce sort of a, a, a new variant of precision sampling, which is a nested two-level uh, precision sampling technique where we have two sets of random variables. But for further information, uh, you can see the introduction of the paper, which discusses this technique. So lastly, I want to end uh, with some lower bounds in open problems. So unfortunately, there's still very large gaps between the upper and lower bounds for our understanding of earth mover distance and minimum spanning tree. In particular, the best known lower bound for earth mover distance was that the product of the space and the approximation of any string algorithm should be at least a log n. This actually wasn't known for MST before, and one of our contrib main contributions is to extend this lower bound to the minimum spanning tree problem as well. But this still begs the question of whether it's possible to develop a single pass or even any pass, polynomial pass streaming algorithm that gives a constant approximation for these geometric stream problems, such as earth over distance, minimum spanning tree, mashing, and so on. And very interestingly, recently uh, it was shown that you can actually get a two-pass constant factor approximation algorithm for the geometric facility location problem. Um, on the other hand, it's not clear how to extend these techniques to earth mover distance yet. So I think that's a, a really interesting uh, open problem to try to generalize these techniques and either get a one-pass algorithm for facility location or a, an any-pass algorithm with a constant approximation for EMD or MST. And we should note here that these lower bounds don't even rule out a constant approximation that uses log n space, let alone polylog space. So there's still a large gap in our understanding and it's an interesting problem to resolve this. So thank you so much for your attention and uh, hope to see you at the conference.